Good morning. It's Thursday, February 16th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, An Angry World, and our scripture is Psalm chapter 2. Why are the nations so angry? My mother was not a person prone to anger. I can only recall seeing her lose it one time when my dog ate the ingredients for a cake she was going to make for an upcoming birthday. He only ate the sugar, frosting, and butter. He spread the flour all around the kitchen. Every nook and cranny, it was the Pillsbury cloud. Come to think of it, that was also the time I heard the only cuss word ever drop from her lips. She chased my dog around the house with that big wooden spoon. She never caught him. Probably a good thing if she had caught up with the beast, it might have completed the deadly sin's triple crown. Anger, cussing, and murder. The decades which followed World War II were, for me, what it was like to live in Andy Griffith's world with Aunt B and Barney Fife and Gomer Pyle and Opie. My summer days were spent exploring Miller's Woods, playing with frogs and swimming at Stump Pond with the snapping turtles. We rode bikes and played cowboys and Indians. That childhood is a fond memory, but it was not perfect. We also had the threat of nuclear bombs dropping on us. Drills in school when that burst of bells rang, we all scrambled to see who could be first to get under our desks. To this day, I still wonder who thought that up. A child's wooden desk has protection from a nuclear blast. Interpersonal relationships were light years different than currently. If a boy got a little flustered and dropped a bad word, anything stronger than darn, especially in front of a girl child or two, culture demanded an immediate apology. Sex was only mentioned in school while dissecting frogs in science class. The Internet of today may have developed its lightning-fast information sharing from the way inappropriate behavior at school in those days reached a child's mother and dad before you got off the bus that afternoon. As gentle and nonviolent as my mom was, 99.99% of all the days of her life, she would have stood out like a sore thumb in today's culture. Today's foulness of language and angry in your face stay out of my space while I act out my sexual preferences for all the world to see on Instagram and Facebook is the perfect medium for developing the attitude that no suppressed wish to grab a gun and obliterate those who have angered you will go unchecked. The tantrum of an undeveloped sense of self-control is punctuated by the sound of semi-automatic gunfire and weeping of godly grieving over this angry world is faintly heard from above. For you today, grieving the loss of what once was, even if that grief is somewhat biased by the rose-colored glasses of an old man's memory of a so-called better day, is not to suggest we have nothing to which we can look forward. Rather, it just gives the appropriate frame for what God has promised. To do that, let's let Apostle Paul have today's last word about the good that's coming, which will dispel the darkness of harsh times of anger in this world in which we live. Paul writes to the Thessalonian believers, We want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then, we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.